Have you ever been stuck in a rut where you say you want one thing, but you keep attracting something completely different? Do you think, what the heck is going on here? That's what we're going to talk about today on this episode called, Are Competing Commitments Limiting Your Growth? If you're a loyal listener and you've been following me regularly and maybe binge watching or binge listening to this podcast and watching me on YouTube, thank you, thank you, thank you. Seriously, I couldn't be here without you. I wouldn't be here without you. I wouldn't want to be here without you. You are awesome and I really appreciate you showing up every week, listening, giving me feedback, leaving comments, leaving reviews, blasting this out to your social media channels so I can reach more people and help them in those places that they get stuck. If it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Amanda Barrientes. I am the host of this podcast and the founder of NFA Coaching. And this is your place to come every week for tips, tools, and inspirational stories and interviews from incredible people to help you optimize your habits so you can lead a kick-ass life and business. That's my mission, my quest. I'll be here every week for you. I love doing this. I love sharing my knowledge and what I'm learning to help you do better, feel better, be better. So this week, we're going to talk about competing commitments. What the heck are competing commitments? So I'm going to give you a really clear definition. A competing commitment is when your conscious and unconscious systems are out of alignment, preventing you from creating what you say you want to create. So that's kind of a mouthful. Let's break it down. How does this look practically? It could be that you say, I want to be really, really rich, but you can't seem to get there. I think most people would raise their hand if I said, who wants to be financially free? Probably 100% of people would say that, but then why aren't they getting there? What's blocking them? Let's use another example. Let's say you're someone who says, I really, really want a deeply committed, fulfilling relationship, but it doesn't seem to happen. Every time you get close, something sabotages it, something big happens in your relationship, you don't find the right type of people, what's going on there? Another good example is you say you want to start a business, you, you're, you're excited about it, you think, oh, I really want to get started on a business, but every time you go to sit down to start the business, to create the website, to write the book, to meet new people that you might want to work with, something happens to distract you. What's going on? It's that your unconscious belief system does not match your conscious desires. So we might say we want th- one thing, but we create another because our unconscious belief system is holding us back. And here's how this works. 95% of our life is run by our unconscious system and only 5% is run by our conscious system. unconscious. So in order for you to shift your reality, you got to get really clear about what your unconscious beliefs are. This isn't easy to do, but it's absolutely doable. Here's a, a good indicator that you're out of alignment is when you're saying you want one thing and creating another, and it happens in a patterned way over your life course. That's when you want to start to get really curious. And I'm going to give you a three step process to help you start to work toward raising awareness about what your unconscious belief system is so that you don't have to have those competing commitments. So I like this idea of competing commitments. It actually is rooted in Debbie Ford's work. And if you haven't heard of Debbie Ford, I started into her work with a book called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. I've done a ton of meditation work with her stuff. She is incredible. She is no longer here, unfortunately, because I so badly want to take a course or a workshop with her. She's an incredible, powerful human being. Get that book if you haven't read it, The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. And I believe she calls it underlying commitments. So I like to think about it as competing commitments because we're battling ourselves. We tend to be our greatest limiters in life. Our mind is a limiter. The way that we think about the world is what we create. And the way that we unconsciously believe things is what we create. So what happens is when you're in your childhood, you get all these downloads and all these belief systems kind of put on to you. Someone I worked with in the prison system, actually, he was a a leader of, of his group, and he would always say that we're like sponges, and we absorb everything that's going on around us. So if we're in an environment that isn't supporting being wealthy because there's a belief system such as wealthy people are bad, they're greedy, jerks, they run the whole world, and they're assholes, You're not going to want to get rich because if you have that unconscious belief, it's going to be holding you 
back from wanting to become something you don't like. So if you hate wealthy people and you think they're greedy jerks, why would you want to become that? We don't want to become what we fear or hate. So our unconscious belief system is going to hold us back from getting there. Let's say you had a really big breakup that you haven't recovered from and you haven't learned to see the benefits and drawbacks of that relationship. And you have this kind of stuck place in you where you go, oh, love is scary, connection is scary. If I enter into a new relationship, I might get hurt like that again. And so you might, you know, say you've been broken up for a while, you, you're out in the dating world and you're like, ah, I really want to find the person. But every time you go to date someone, you find all their flaws. Or when you start to get close, you sabotage somehow. This is your unconscious system holding you back from connecting because it's afraid you're going to get hurt again. So the cool thing about our unconscious is it's helping us run and operate our lives from our belief systems and in some ways an autopilot habit way. So so autopilot habits set you up for success if your habits are set up for success. If your unconscious belief system and your habits are not set up for success, they're going to limit you and hold you back in growing. So let's go into the three steps. So I want you this week to practice, I call this my spectrum method. And I think anytime we can use a wider spectrum of thought and, and start to connect our consciousness with our unconsciousness, the more we have the magic wand to create what we say we want. So you're going to help yourself become unstuck and, and less limited in your belief system and you won't have as many competing commitments. So here's the three step, step process. If you can write these down, it'll be helpful. Otherwise, come back, rewind, write them down. Number one, notice areas of your life or business where you say you want one thing, but you're getting another. The first step is awareness. You've got to start to be mindful of who you are. Get really curious. So notice the areas of life or business where you say one thing and you want another. This is indicative that you have competing commitments going on. Number two, acknowledge that you are out of alignment and get curious about your possible underlying conscious beliefs. So I'll say that again, acknowledge that you are out of alignment, get curious about your possible underlying unconscious beliefs. This is never about beating yourself up, it's about getting curious. It's like looking underneath a blanket that has, has a whole bunch of lumps in it and you're not sure what it is, you're not scared, you're not angry about it, you're just lifting the blanket up to say, what's there? That's the same thing you're doing with yourself. Get curious, become an investigator of yourself. Develop a deep connected relationship with yourself so you know yourself so you can shift things when you want to. So in number two, I want you to ask yourself, what could the root of this belief be? What could be the root of this belief? Okay, obviously if you had a breakup that was really challenging, you wanna look there. If you're saying you want uh, to have wealth but you're not getting there, look at your childhood belief system around money. Start to think about writing a money story. Contact me if you wanna do that. I love writing money stories with people. Number three. Once you find what you think could be the potential historical root, create at least 10 counter beliefs to shift your unconscious fear into conscious clarity. Okay, so this is the spectrum part. Instead of hyper focusing on why you're not getting what you want, because that expands, you're going to start focusing on what are some other ways I could think about this? What are some ways I could look at that rooted belief? Like, let's say it's the relationship and you go, oh, people are going to hurt me. Look to areas where you haven't been hurt. Look to areas where there's all kinds of beautiful love in the world. Look to areas where you see connected relationships. Look to the connected relationships you already have. You're going to want to start shifting your belief system. Even if you don't know exactly the unconscious route, start where you think the best spot is, and this will start to help you shift. So I want you to write down 10 counter beliefs. 10. This helps you create a larger spectrum and balance your perspective and your thinking. What this will do is create cooperating commitments instead of competing commitments. All right, and I want you to let me know how this goes. Leave me comments, try it out. I love to hear from my people. This is why I do this work. Please take a picture, a screenshot, blast this out to your social media channels with the hashtag NFA coaching. I'll be back. Actually, I won't be back next week. It's Thanksgiving. I'm taking a break. But you, if you're in my tribe, you'll get a newsletter note to say hi. I hope you have an incredible week where you thrive and feel alive.